It's time for the sandbox news. We now have the ability to make add-ons for the level editor. We can make our own custom primitives, for example, a staircase or any other object that you can code. There's new clothing, updates to the Gary's Mod style add-ons, a rework of Fog, updates to Ambient Occlusion, and a ton of updates to Hammer Editor. There are a few very minor updates to Construct this week. If you look closely, you can see the roads and parking lot have been beaten up. There's a lot more potholes and tire marks on them. There's also text telling you to look before crossing the street, and there's new garbage cans here. This is revolutionary. There's new clothes, including a new skirt and tank top, and a full set of medieval iron armor. This is like iron armor from Minecraft but it's HD. There's some updates to the Gary's Mod style add-on. So previously there was a debug outline showing you the size of the bounding box. And previously the models didn't actually render for other players and multiplayer. It was just an error, but that's been added now. Here you can see some of the models that people have uploaded so far. A lot of bombs, a lot of props. I made a video the other day looking through a bunch of these. So if you wanna see them, go ahead and check it out. We can now make add-ons for the level editor. If I go into create new add-on, we can see there is a tool type and we can make custom primitive blocks in Hammer now. So this primitive tool has been reworked. If you're an experienced Hammer user, you'll recognize this looks different. There's some new options here for the block tool. We can make it hollow and we can disable the different faces. This has been completely reworked, but all the old functionality has been recreated. We can see here, there's a new stairs type. So looks like this is a spiral staircase. It's still a work in progress, so there are some issues, but we can see a spiral staircase is being generated here, just as primitive geometry. I can tweak a bunch of settings with it. I can change the angle. I can make it be 360 and have a full spiral. I think I can even increase it past 360. Yep, that would mean I would just have to go through and delete all of the non-step faces and then probably click thicken on here to get full steps. So there we go, a nice spiral staircase. This is very cool. We can change the amount of steps. I'll lower the angle back down to 180. If we click the yellow pencil here, we can drag this around to, it doesn't seem to update. So it looks like there's a slight malfunction with the yellow pencil where it doesn't update properly, unless if you change the number manually or resize the block. So here you can see I set the number of steps to be 107. So those are some pretty small steps. I wonder how big it is. Yeah, you can't even step on that with your foot. You'll just fall over. There's some other settings to play with. We can change the radius. So this is an inner radius of zero. If I set it to eight, it looks like this. We can change the step width. I'll change this to be 128. Very cool. This staircase looks like it would be kind of hard to climb. So maybe you don't have your inner radius that low. This is very exciting. This is going to make mapping a lot quicker and easier. Now remember, these are tools add-ons, so I can actually go into Visual Studio and make my own primitives. Here we can see the code for some of the different primitive types. All of this hot loads and updates in real time too. So if I was to delete the step surface in the code for the staircase, after a quick compile, we can see it's updated and there's no top faces on the stairs. It's just empty and you'll fall through. I've created this block now and I'm going to create another one to demonstrate something. If I was to add the top surface back in and save it and recompile, we'll see the top surface gets added back onto the primitive that I'm dragging out, but this one has already been created, so it doesn't get updated. These hammer add-ons are a huge game changer. It'll make mapping a lot quicker and easier to do. So currently it takes about one second to make a spiral staircase. I'm going to make a quick spiral staircase manually by hand the old way and see how long that takes. And there we have it, a spiral staircase. Now, I'm not sure if this was the optimal way of making it, but it seemed pretty quick to me. This is very exciting, and it's going to revolutionize the way that we make maps. In the future, we'll be able to mod even more parts of the level editor and really customize it as much as we want. This wasn't the only update to Hammer, though. I'll open up a different map. There's new updates to Fog, the Gradient Fog, I believe. So this should preview in Hammer 
Looks like it only previews if I have lighting turned on. So the fog entity was completely reworked and it was made in C sharp. So now I believe we can, yeah, it's hard to see here. So I'll have to increase the fog height and I'll increase the density. Now it's a very foggy day. I believe I can change the color of it too. If I make it darker, it's just going to make the fog disappear but I can change the color of it. I like that it updates in real time and I think this was actually broken previously. I don't think it worked. Being updated and recreated in C Sharp, that means we can apply this fog through code. I'll go to the entity here and we can see there's a bunch of different parameters that we can play with. So we can update this in real time in game. This also works with menus now. It looks like the lighting is still glitched out in the character creation screen, but previously there was a fog in here. It looks like it's still might be. It's really hard to tell what's going on with the lighting glitching out like this. I think maybe there is still a fog and it's further away. Maybe this whitish blue stuff is fog. Obviously you don't want very much fog in the character creation screen, otherwise you won't be able to see the outfit. And there's also updates to the RT baked lighting in Hammer. So previously, I don't think this worked with custom shaders but it does now. There's two different options, a low quality render, which we're seeing now. This kind of looks like the game Dusk, and I can do a high quality lighting, which obviously will take longer, but it's a much higher quality render. I don't think this is very accurate. Let's see how accurate this is to the in-game compile. So this is what it looks like in game. And this is what it looks like in the Hammer RT baked lighting high quality preview. It looks a lot brighter in here. And I wonder if that's because I don't think it's affected by tone mapping and post-processing. It doesn't seem to restart the compile, so maybe that hasn't been implemented yet. This is also only displaying the raw textures, I believe. So materials in Source 2 are PBR, but this is only using the raw texture. So it's not using all the available material data. Again, this was just added and it's a very early work in progress. So I'm sure we'll see updates to this in the future. I believe there's also updates to ambient occlusion. Apparently they work on dynamic objects now. So let's see if any of these props have AO proxies on them. So this might actually be really hard to show off. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to tell without a different model. Uh, if you look closely, you can see it's dark where the two balloons collide. I believe that's because of the new ambient occlusion updates. This is separate from a shadow being cast and it looks a bit more realistic. We can kind of see it here if you look very closely and you know what you're looking for. So there's ambient occlusion on dynamic objects. Previously, I believe ambient occlusion only worked on the world. It's so hard to see it here, but this will make a big difference. There are a few other minor changes. For example, there was a lobby bar that showed sometimes on the bottom here that's been removed and a lot more old garbage code has been removed from the engine. So that's very good to see. I'm actually making a cool virtual reality game in Sandbox. It's similar to Job Simulator. I plan to have a video coming out on it on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that, it's very exciting. That's it, that's all the Sandbox news. Like, comment, subscribe. <gasps> Is this Dream? Minecraft Dream? No, it's a missing texture though, we'll never know.